Okay. Good morning, church. I am Yawalak Ong. Uh, this is my uh, fellow teacher, Miss Yong. We are both from our Tatika Anaksuri Shahaya. Before I share my testimony, I will let Miss Yong give her testimony first. <laughs> wow, I first are uh, very scared. Uh. I feel I'm in London, you know. I tell my friend because I'm actually a Chinese teacher. I all the while I speak Chinese. I'm from Chinese service. But I really thank God I be here. I also thank God I have the opportunity to have a chance to go for this uh, go, uh, mission trip in Medan for three days. So actually, I thought I couldn't. I couldn't join. I cannot join this Medan trip. Because uh, I plan to help my my girl, my my daughter, my elder daughter, has actually give birth. Um, I need to help her in her confinement, uh, confinement month. But she give birth early, and she did her confinement in her confinement center. So I no need to, no need to help her lah. That's why my <laughs> my boss said, "Oi, you can go already, wah." <laughs> and I suddenly wake up, I can go. Uh. <laughs> so, in first first day, we having our mission with uh, almost 150 children. 150 children. We got them to dance, to play, play games, to do art and craft, and show them uh, the love of God. We also teach them uh, forgiveness. Uh, the topic is forgiveness. I can see the children are very simple there and very lovely to follow us, to dance, to worship and uh, watch the video we prepare. I believe the love of God actually is very easy to plant in their heart. They are very excited to get the present from us that actually is just a small lantern uh. and the very small one and small gift from us but they all very excited very excited um, if I compare the Medan children and our Tatika children I feel our children here are very blessing with all the things are given by their parents and prepared by our teacher also. But I want to, sometimes uh, I want to get a small sticker to my children, my Tatika children. They will say, Ayo, this uh, my mommy can buy. Eh. <laughs> uh, this one, my, my, my mommy buy a lot. Uh, mommy, I don't need, I don't need. Uh, like that. So I, I say, this one from me, eh, from teacher. Eh. I say, you see, uh, they are so blessing. Uh. Sometimes, sometimes our children, I want to wear the shoe, you no, know, the beautiful shoe. The mommy brought the new one for them. They come down, for, get out from the car. I say, I don't want to wear this shoe. Uh, this is too new for me. They select, you know. They always select, you know. The mommy give to them. They will say the one or what. On Sunday, actually, second days, we went to their morning service. Ah, uh, I really can feel. The Indonesia worship te team are very strong and very holy and powerful, just like all of you. <laughs> because, because we are VIP people ma, from Malaysia, ma. that's why we, I, we sit on the second line of, uh, of their seat. La. I really can feel uh, the presence of God. I, I even tell my friend, I say, I, I cry. I don't know why I cry. I say, because their worship trains are very, very strong. I can feel the presence of God. Before that, I got fears to go to Indonesia. You know, I really scared. And I got phobia to hear MH <laughs> The minute my boss, if we go by MH Street, eh? huh? I say, what? You know, you know, I got phobia to hear MH you? <laughs> so, like, many things like that uh, to uh, hindrance to, I mean, here, I, many things like, 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 I feel like, cannot go, cannot go, and uh, I, I make it, you know, I'm still going to, for this maiden trip. Uh. Actually, the, uh, the third day, uh, 
the Pastor Salomoa from this place at the Mar Brian, Brian, right? Yes. Brian, uh, the place called GSJA. Actually, this is the overseas branch of uh, AOG, right? Kajang AOG, right? So they established on 2007. They start with 10 people only and with one cell group. But now they grow already and there are a lot of people. They, they're really good. Uh, <laughs> you know my English, uh, forgive me. Uh. <laughs> so uh, on the third day, uh, actually, we uh, Pastor Salomon uh, bring us to the village. In the village, uh, I can see some of the children wearing singlet without shoe. Uh, not like our Tatika, new shoe also to want to wear. <laughs> uh, Pastor Solomon told us that village have 5,000 of people. Some father earn money just to spend for their drinks and cigarettes. Uh, rock out, uh. rock out, uh. They like to smoke. Uh. Never give money to their family. As the mother have to come out to work for their family. Some children are hungry without food. So their church actually give them food and educa education. So the so uh, Pastor Solomon also could say Salomon, uh, I, I read wrongly. Uh, this just like um, because they are very poor, their 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 parents are very poor, cannot give them enough food and education. This just like curse curse, you know. So he say he want to break the curse. Uh, so they had to work hard. Uh, so that the next generation will not suffer like their parents. They will give a better life. They will have a better life. Uh, like this, uh. Actually, the third day, uh, third day after we finish our, our uh, mission with children, the third day we went to see their classroom, you know. There are kitchen on upstairs. Lah. The downstairs is the church and Tatika. The upstairs is their classroom, their kitchen and office on upstairs. But they are, do you know their upstairs, uh, the, their classroom actually is not bright, you know, uh, not as good as our classroom. Ah. So when I see the whiteboard, ah, I feel very sad and surprised. Their whiteboard actually turning the color turned to brown color already, you know. So sometimes I go to my friend's class, uh, my colleagues, uh, because I teach Chinese, ma. All the classes I had to I had to go. Their their whiteboard actually cooked a bit, you know. So actually, uh, when I see their whiteboard brown color, uh, I I feel very surprised and sad, uh. Because uh, they are not only that, they got top, 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 you know. Top, 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 uh, uh, that one is uh, black color and brown color, top, 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 you know, <laughs> on their whiteboard, you know. You know, if I teach Chinese, uh, I don't think I, I can teach uh, because my Chinese word a lot of thought. One thought, uh, <laughs> one thought will make, you know, the Chinese word, uh, one thought will make the meaning different, you know. <laughs> How to write, right? So after that, uh, our team discussed already. We're willing to give uh, some dona donation, uh, come up with the money, and pass to Pastor Solomon to buy the new whiteboard. Now they have the new whiteboard in their classroom. Thank God. <laughs> and and on Sunday service also, I observed some of them uh, dress up uh, very well. That's why today I also dress up well. <laughs> and very beautiful. Actually, uh, when we go to see their house, uh, their house are very small and very simple. Do you know, I even watched, uh, I saw their uh, ceiling fan, uh, the fan uh, on the top. Uh, only, only this big. No? This, big. Uh, this big only. How, uh, how to get cooling? Uh? I don't know. Uh. <laughs> so, um, I thought they are okay, you know. They wear very beautiful. They dress up very well to church. But when 
see their house actually simple, you know. Mm, and and I also went to uh, the village one, uh, the village uh, church. I went to their toilet. I saw the water is actually yellow color. No, I don't know how they use. I learned to use also. <laughs> They are not rich, uh, but they're still given to the church. They serve, uh, they serve us with nice food and tea time also, uh, plus tea time. They're willing to give and serve us just like their brother and sister. Then I really feel warm uh, and they are, they are really hospitable to us, to all of us. I believe our team not only give joyful to their children, we also encourage their, their teacher, member, uh, Pastor Sal Salomon, and, and their family. I uh, hope that they will continue to leave their people in Medan. Just like you say, our God is here, our God also in Medan. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Time's up already. <laughs> I don't need to chat. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay, now it's my turn. Uh, cut short, huh? I'm here this morning to tell you how blessed I feel also that I'm able to join this mission trip to Medan uh, with the teacher and, and worker. Uh, we left home uh, in the morning about 5 a.m. on Saturday, and then we arrived in Medan around 11 a.m. After we kept our belongings, we went out for the first day of mission at about 3 in the afternoon until evening, and then we come back really late at night. But we, uh, I thought we should be very tired. But when we were full of joy, when we saw a lot of children waiting for us, sit down there quietly and excited to meet us when we get there, see, wow, teacher, teacher. <laughs> and then, but I cannot speak Bahasa. Somebody come and, and, and talk with me. I don't know. I dragged some of my friends, translate for me. <laughs> And then uh, when they come, they're excited, right? And I also excited because they expect something from us. And then the Bible in the scripture in Luke uh, chapter 18, verse 17 uh, came into my mind. Jesus called the children to him and said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as this. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like little children will never enter it. When I see the action, oh, I understand this scripture. <laughs> During this trip, we had lots of fellowship with Pastor Salomo, his wife, church team, and members. I have learned a lot from them. We had lots of fun, laughter, and joyful event with them. Mission trip also can be fun, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there was such a strong feeling of love, harmony, and above all, a deep sense of God's presence around the children and us when we had worship time. We call it power fun. Uh, everyone was filled with Holy Spirit, as you will see in the video that I'm going to show you now. Okay. Please enjoy the video. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing, amazing. Isn't it amazing? We have a bunch of dedicated, passionate, and loving teachers of our Datika Anna Sri Chaya. They not only minister to the children in our church, but they also go international to minister to them in Indonesia. I just want, I'm, I just want to say I'm really encouraged by this bunch of teachers. I think it really inspires us to continue to step out. This is a great example of stepping out. Amen? Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for encouraging us. So moving on, we have, we have a member installation today. So I would like to invite Pastor Kelvin, our senior pastor, to conduct this member installation. Thank you, Carmen. All right, today we're going to have a um, few members that are going to be installed into our church. Right? They, they believe... 
they believe in our church, that I want to establish their spiritual roots here in this church, you know, and so we want to receive them into membership. And um, so let's get on to it. I'm going to call your names and then you're going to come and uh, stand facing the congregation. First of all is uh, Brother Chong Chun Kiat, CK. Where is CK? Yeah, come, come. Sim Su Pei, his wife. Sumita. Sumita. Right, come. Nick Tan. Nick Tan. Lai Mei Queen. And Ban Wen Lun. Okay, we stand facing the congregation. Stay in the centre. Don't be shy. All right, okay, but before that, maybe you just turn towards me first. <laughs> I want to remind you of the membership covenant, right? When you first apply to be received the membership, right, you will have read this. But it's also for the rest of us to be reminded of uh, the covenant. First of all, that you protect the unity of my church, of the church, by acting in love towards one other members, refusing the gossip, following the leaders whom the church has set aside, Secondly, you will share the responsibility of the church, of your church, by praying for its growth, by inviting the unchurched to attend, by warmly welcoming those who visit. Thirdly, you will serve the ministry of our church by discovering your gifts and talents, by being equipped to serve by our pastors, by developing a servant's heart. Fourthly, you will support the testimony of our church, by attending faithfully, by living a godly life, giving regularly. <laughs> Suddenly it's off. <laughs> so that is the responsibility, you know, as a members, you know, as a, re as a reminder for every one of us here as well, who are members. You know, and for those who are not members, regulars, you know, I strongly encourage you, you know, that this has set an example for you that they will sign up to register as official members of the church, taking, you know, uh, this church to be their spiritual home, all right? And so, I'm going to pray for you, even as we receive you into membership, when or not you just turn to the congregation. I'm going to invite what members, if you are here, to join me to just stand beside uh, with this who have been received into membership, okay? Why don't you just stand forward a little bit so that the mem more members can come behind you. All right, church, would you just please stand all right, and stretch off your hand towards these who are uh, being received into membership this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor Su, come here. Just stand beside, uh, behind uh, Sumira. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come, let's pray for this. Father, we just thank you, God, for these, your children, oh God, that Lord, that God has just been received into membership in this church, oh God, your church, oh God. Even today, oh Lord, that God, they will say, the Lord, even to the rest of us, even that Lord, they are putting their roots down into this church, oh God, they believe in this church, that Lord, you have set up, oh God, and Lord, they are going to faithfully serve you, oh God, even in this church, oh God. Father, we pray right now, God, for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon them, oh God. Even the Lord, as they serve, oh God, you in this church, oh God, the Lord, the fruits of the labor, oh God, will be bringing you all the glory, oh Father God. I pray, Father, you use them, oh God, for your ministry. You use them for your glory, oh Father God. The Lord, 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 I pray that God anointing will just flow upon them, oh God. The Lord, through these lives, God, others will also come to know you, oh God. Even, Lord, those who have not known the love of Jesus Christ, oh God, through their testimony, oh God, through their ministry, oh God, they will come to know the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I just thank you, God, for these, oh God. Even right now, Lord, ask for the unction of your Holy Spirit, oh God, to all just come and overwhelm them, oh God. That, Lord, they will, believe, they will believe in this church, oh God. And, Lord, they will continue, Lord, to support this church, oh God, causing it 
continue to grow, O oh God. I pray, Father, you use them, O oh God. Even right now, as we pray over them, O God, as we receive them into the membership of this church, O oh God, they are part of this family of God. And Lord, we truly welcome them, O oh God, even as you have bring them to this church, O oh God. Lord, we thank you, God, for these, O oh Father God. Commit them to you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome. Without further ado, uh, church, let's get ready our Bible and let, welcome Pastor Sue to deliver the Word of God. Let's welcome her. Okay, good morning, church. How are you today? How are you this week? Very good. Praise God. Praise God. Wonderful Jesus. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I think uh, for the past few weeks, uh, even uh, for Pastor Eileen, that we heard you know, how about uh, evangelism, touching lives through evangelism. That is our topic. We have this topic, touching lives, in four series. And then uh, Pastor Nikki taught us touching lives through influence. And last week, Pastor uh, Kelvin taught us touching lives through. Can you anybody remember? Five cents for your thought. Compassion, correct compassion. And today we're going to look into touching lives through relationship. Okay, through relationship. You know, actually, uh, God wanted us to have relationship. Even God Himself, you know, the, the, the theory of um, Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Actually, they are three in one. Okay? And also, in Genesis, it's also said that it is not good. The Bible says it's not good for a man to be alone. That's why God created Eve from the ribs of Adam as a companion. Okay? So what is relationship? See here, touching life through relationship. What is relationship? The definition of relationship is the way in which two, at least two, two or more concepts, objects, or people are connected or the state of being connected. There must be two. The state of being connected by blood or marriage. And the third one is the way in which two or more people or organizations regard and behave toward each other. Just like us in the church. You know, we have a relationship. I believe every one of you are having a relationship with Kajang Assembly. Amen? And from the Bible, there are many, many examples of relationship. I call it biblical, uh, biblical example of relationship. The first one is Abraham and Lot. You know, Abraham, we all know the story of Abraham. Abraham reminds us of loyalty and going above and beyond for friends. And of course here, um, this person that we refer to is Lord. Lord, actually, we all know that Lord is Abraham's nephew. Okay? But, you know, there's in Genesis chapter 14, verse 14 to 16, when Abraham heard that his relative has been taken captive, he called out 318 trained men born in his household and went in pursuit as far as then. During the night, Abraham or Abraham at the time, divided his men to attack them <coughs> excuse me, and routed them, pursuing them as far as Hobah, north of Damascus. He covered, that means he got back all the goods and brought back his 
relative Lot and his possession together with the woman and the other people. Lord Abraham, go to the extent, even, you know, at the expense of his own life, to bring back his nephew Lot, who is in danger, who is being taken captive. That is Abraham and Lot. And the, the next one is Ruth and Naomi. Is Sister Ruth not here today? Oh, okay, you are in the auto ministry. Okay, Ruth and Naomi. Friendship can be forged even among different ages and from anywhere. So in this case, we see that Ruth and Naomi, they become very close to one another. And it became a family and looking out, you know, taking care of one another throughout their lives. And in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16 to 17, but Ruth replied, you know, when Naomi asked Ruth to make a choice whether she wants to, um, Ruth wants to return back to her homeland or does she want to follow Naomi back? And but Ruth replied, say, Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. And I like this. I think all of you is like this. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. How close their relationship after so many years they were together. You know, even after, you know, the husband passed away. But Ruth chose to stay back and continue to live with her mother-in-law. How many of us, if we have a choice, like Ruth, are we or will we be doing the same thing, choosing to stay with our mother-in-law? Or, if give me a choice, I better leave. You see how close they are. David and Jonathan, in the Bible, I think all of us are very familiar with this story. You know, Two men, but when the Bible described in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 1 to 3, after David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan the king's son, King Saul's son, Jonathan. There was an immediate bond between them, for Jonathan left David. I think, you know, sometimes for uh, a girl or a guy and a girl, then they say love at first sight. But these two guys really felt, it's not love at first sight, but they really felt that bonding, you know. I don't know how many of you experience that. Sometimes certain people that you meet for the first time, you feel that I can be their friend or I can be her friend and actually he can be my friend. You have that kind of feeling. There are people who give that, they call it the vibes, the impression. And <clears throat> so... From that day, Saul kept David with him and wouldn't let him return. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. So biblical, the Bible verse that we love God and must love our neighbour as ourselves. How Jonathan can love David. We're going to look through a few more um, Bible examples. Elijah and Elisha. You know, they stick together. And Elisha shows that not letting Elijah go to battle alone. Because actually, you know, Elijah knows that actually God is going to take him away. But Eli Elisha chose not to leave his master. He wants to follow wherever he go. I want to be with him. No matter where he's going. So in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 2, say, and Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has told me to go to battle. But Elisha replied, As surely as the Lord lives, and you yourself live, 
I will never leave you. So they went down together to battle. She, he won't leave the master alone. And, the most, and one of the most famous miracle, Meshach, Shadrach and Abednego and Daniel. When friends look out for one another, you know, in, um, like, David, uh, like Daniel did, he actually requested Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to be promoted to high position. You know, sometimes God leads us to help our friends. Would you do that? The three friends went on to show King Nebuchadnezzar that God is great and God is the only God when they were thrown into the fire, into the furnace. That King Nebuchadnezzar can see that actually the God that they serve is a true God and is a great God. For us Christians, if we know any of our brothers and sisters who are in need of, of a job, and you, you know that in your company, there is a vacancy, or there are some vacancy, would you take the step and the effort to tell it to the brother or sister, hey, come over to my company. Come and join us. Or you are afraid to bring in another person because you might not know whether the person will tarnish your image or could cause some problem to you because of fear. But Daniel, no. He went out and told the king to take them in. And I believe many of you are so blessed and many of you are in a position that you can extend your hand and help the rest and help the others. So Daniel actually, in uh, Daniel chapter 2, verse 49, says that at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to be in charge of all the affairs of the province of Babylon while Daniel remained in the court. And the last one but not least is Jesus with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Luke chapter 10, verse 38, as Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Now, I don't know how many of you, last time, you know, last time I think for us who are in the older generation, our house doors are always open. Correct or not? You want to go from the front or the back? If you are in the front, definitely the front door is open. And we are all at the back, the front, uh, the back door is always open. Anybody can just walk in and out, even dog and cat. No, there's one time the cat went into my bedroom and do her business. My goodness, my whole comforter, my bed are all stained. You know, huh? and it's, you know, cats, stools and urine really very, very smelly. <laughs> But that's how we lived last time. We don't... Now, of course, nowadays, we, we can't blame you or I can't blame myself. We have to always lock the door. Correct? Because we are living in a different era now. Our situation is different. But I think those of us who are in those times, I think we enjoy the freedom that we have. We can go and cycle, go and buy ice cream, go and go anywhere that we want without any fear or trembling. And nowadays, if you ask your daughter even to go out, drive out, and then by the time one hour later, after she's supposed to come back and she's not come back, you, get, you start to get worried. Because situations are different now. So Jesus was welcomed into Martha's home, Mary's home, Lazarus' home. And Jesus had a close relationship with them. And true friends, are able to speak their mind honestly to one another, whether right or wrong. Meanwhile, friends do what they can tell to each other the truth and help one another. How many of you like that? If you, are a, if you have a friend, would you want your friend to tell you your weakness? Yes? How many say yes? That's good. 
But of course, the person who tells the weakness is also must be, you know, must have the right attitude. You know, not less you right and left. But really correct you, speak to you in love. I think we all like that. When we have a true friend who really can speak and tell us the truth, what's wrong with us? If there's anything that we do wrong, come and tell us in love, which is very important. In John chapter 11, verse 21 to 23, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Oh, a little bit like accusing Jesus. Why you are not here? You know? But that is how close their relationship are or were. That's why she is able, she was able to do that, to tell Jesus, why you are not here? Just like you will tell your friend, but you don't lash at your friend, but you say, why you are not here just now? That's how close they are. Buddy, buddy. You know, we are friends. We can say anything under the tree. No limit because of the closeness of friendship. There are some principles in building relationship. Today, why we talk about relationship is to encourage all of us to build relationship as disciples of Christ, as children of God, as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to build relationship. You know, friendship or relationship come in different uh, forms. Sometimes it's very uh, casual. Casual relationship or casual friendship, plenty, everywhere. But it arises quickly and also go off quickly. You know? So, but intimate friends are few in number. Very few. Relationship takes longer to develop. And a great relationship like Jonathan and David in 1 Samuel chapter 18 doesn't actually happen automatically, very fast. No. Because why? Relationship need number one, it need some investment. Time. Takes time. Takes time. No relationship with a friend, a spouse, or your life partner, or children will flourish without the investment of our time in their lives. Just like many times, I think now a lot of uh, problems now, situation in family is where husband and wife don't spend much time, both of so very busy with their career. And sometimes, and many times also, we are very busy that we do not have time for our children. Sometimes, we need some finance too, to invest, to build relationship. I always remember what David said. If I'm not mistaken, I feel around now. He said he won't sacrifice to God anything that doesn't cost him anything. Because sometimes when we reach out, when we serve God, sometimes we need to come out time. Sometimes we need to spend some money. You know, I remember my, <clears throat> during my teaching time, um, I was, how, when I was saved, after I, I got saved, my spiritual mother, or now you can say my mentor, she actually teach me almost once a week or, or Two weeks, one, she will give me Bible study. The basic Christianity uh, uh, foundation for us, for me. So, because of that, I actually grow. Mature. And of course, besides going through some teaching materials, she also spent a lot of time with me. Sometimes we just talk because we stay in the same house. Not in the same room though. But we used to talk over meals, over lunch, over dinner, when we're traveling together to our school. We spend time together. That's why I can grow. Because of her effort, her, 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 because she sees the need that I need to be taught 
I need to be mentored. Because of that, I actually have the burden to mentor, to disciple those young believers who came to our church. And most of the time, of course, I mentor ladies. Those newcomer, those who are young in the Lord, those new believers, I will take them and give them Bible teaching. And there's one time I want to tell you one incident. You know, just like babies, we cannot expect them to grow overnight. Correct or not? It takes time for the baby to grow. You know, maybe at, far, at first, you know, they, they, they started, you know, some last time children, uh, some baby, uh, I don't know, now children, when they come up from the mother's womb, already the eyes so big, you know. <laughs> last time, uh, the eyes always like, you know, open, after some time, open one, open two. Now I think too much of vitamins already, too much of nutrient in the mother's womb. They actually, you know, born with, I saw my niece, uh, my, not, not my niece, my grand niece. I went to see her, you know, when she, she gave birth in Tungshin. Just bring out from the delivery room, the eyes so big. <laughs> My goodness, just came out only, the mother still inside, but she, she already came out. Nowadays, you see all the young, uh, those uh, newly born, their eyes are wide open when they come to the world. So, you know, we cannot overnight. So what happened was, she, she's very busy. She said, oh, one day, one day, two lessons, one day, two lessons. So, you know, actually got, ten, uh, got 20 lessons. Supposed to take 20 weeks. Sometimes it will prolong longer if that week we cannot meet. So you have to prolong longer. But she said, one week, two time, one week, two, uh, no, one week, two lessons, one week, two lessons, faster. You know, that time I also was uh, very, um, not so experienced uh, in uh, giving the... Uh, 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 Bible study at that time. I said, okay, okay, never mind. Do. But actually, she doesn't grow as what she should be growing. Because two weeks, one, two week, uh, two weeks, one lesson, two weeks, one lesson is too much. It's not a matter of finishing what the material needs to be done. No. But it's where we process, we, 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 we journey with them together in their walk with God. That is very important. So it's too short. It's too short a time. And, and, and not about finishing uh, the... the, the and the material. It's really, you know, it's really um, journey with them together. It's really ministering to them, even, even as we learn the word of God together, even as we, uh, uh, as, he, as she journey in her life, after she learned and how she put into practice. You know, so, you know, this disciple making, this building, actually a relationship will be uh, built up when we have that kind of uh, Bible study teaching. So, it need time. It need time. But of course, if we as a young um, uh, believer, sometimes we do not know. But if you do know that even as a young believer, we need to be taught, we need to go for some classes, come and approach the leaders, approach the cell leader. I need to be taught. I need to have some lesson. You know, I need to learn. Seek out. That will be wonderful. Second one is communication. Communication. Every friendship, every relationship is always founded upon two-way communication. A relationship cannot be established only one way. It's always two-way. You give out, the person return back to you. It's always two ways. It takes two hands to clap. We cannot clap with one hand. If you want to clap on your thigh also, the thigh must be there. <laughs> you need two hands to clap. The relationship will form when two parties also agree or see the need or wanted to build that relationship. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Just like David and Jonathan, both felt that they want to have and build that friendship. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth, but only such that is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. I remember somebody actually said this, and I hope you can remember too, because it always in my mind. 
The person say, if there is nothing good to say, then don't say it. You know, when we want to talk something bad, if, when we want to criticize, and we want to comment in a, without love, let us stay cautious that if there's nothing good to say, better not say. Because if we say in the wrong motive, we actually cause more harm to the other person. And also, you know what? Sometimes when we are upset, and we, the more we talk, the worse we, be, we felt. Do you agree with me? Sometimes we are very, let's say, for our country. You know? We are upset with the situation. But if we talk just to criticize the situation in our country, the more we talk, the more angry we become. But if we have the right motive, and we pray about it, and let's discuss it. What can we do? What should we pray? How do we pray for our country? If we speak it in a different way, in a different motive, not in criticizing, because when we criticize, when we speak without love, it will also bring harm to the hearer and also to ourselves. So we have to be careful. Always speak in love, respect for the listener. Our motives and attitude are very, very important. You know, when I was in uh, form, f form 6, I don't know whether Form 6, anybody Form 6 here? <laughs> I don't know, you, you are, I think, after school very long already. Do they still have orientation week in school now? Yeah. You know, when during orientation week, the senior will ask you to do a lot of weird things, correct? <laughs> and I remember my... One, my senior, one lady, one Malay lady, she is so soft-spoken, she is so polite, but she would tell me to do a lot of weird things. But I will obediently do it. Because she said, you know, orientation week is all about getting to know the person. You know, orientation week, how if you are in a university or in a college, orientation week, that's where the college brings you to show you where is the library, where is this, where is the canteen, where is the lecture hall, where is your classroom, where is this, this department is where, engineer department is where. That's how to, it, orientation is all about. It's not to, you know, bring curses and, and scold the person upside down. That's what happened to me when I was in college, in teacher's training college. There's one guy... Same state from with me, you know, Pahang. <laughs> I remember him, but doesn't mean I'm, I have grudges with him. <laughs> no grudges. But I can remember, you know, how every time he sees us with a few girls, huh, he stay in the, I think, he, no, he stay outside. First year, stay inside the college in uh, Cheras here, Maktab Perguruan Technik. Every time he saw us, he would just bark like a dog. <laughs> My goodness, every time she see us, he, see, he saw us, he would just shout and shout and shout and shout. You know, how you want to build the relationship if you keep on shouting at us? For the whole week, you know. My goodness, you know. After that, I did tell him, I said, that's not the way, you know. That's really not the way. You can actually speak nicely. You know, I, I, <coughs> when I was polytechnic, we have an orientation week. Our neighbours are seniors. When they come to us, are we also a bit shivering <laughs> to see us come to our house, you know, where we stay in the uh, when we are renting a room. But they don't shout and and <clears throat> slash you upside down like that. But they actually, after the whole orientation week, they actually do care. They actually come. Is there anything I can help you? That's what orientation is all about. The seniors taking care of the junior. It's not to shout and and and, and lash them upside down. Frighten them that you know when they come to a new place, you know my I have one classmate. Her brother, we are in first year. Her brother was third year. Her brother was out for a uh, teacher's training. Um, what do you call that? They are training outside in the school. So when she came in, she pretend to be sick. You know why? Because her brother really wreck those 
junior who came in really get a hard time so actually they are, when they know that she is coming they get ready you know to really bash to really give her you know and she pretend to be sick for the whole week so this is not what orientation is all about so always we remember that speak with love speak we will have a right motive and a right attitude sharing of joy and sorrows you know you know when we build a relationship it's actually about sharing a joy and sorrow you know i'm i always very um admire this roof and naomi you know a really genuine open relationship requires sharing of both joys and sorrow we prefer that it all be laughter sometimes we we'll, we hope that you know during the relationship the building of the relationship always laughter and joy no cannot be while we are on earth there's always be challenges there's always be situation where where it's not that fun but you know like Ruth and Naomi when the husband is around when they are in good time when they're together you know but but when the husband passed away left Naomi alone and then the other sister-in-law also left you know but no no now Ruth still stay back because you know Chinese people always say here hokkien hakka hakka cannot don't know how to speak why is it <laughs> why is it <coughs> uh that means when you are in prosperity, you share together, you are together. But when you are in problem, in difficulty, you are still together. That's what real friendship, real relationship. Amen? They are together. And here in the church, you know, when the church goes through situation, you stick by the church. You are together with the church. I think for those of you who are many years here, you actually journey together with the church. And the church go through so, I mean, go through so many difficulties, but you are still there for the church and for, the, for God that you love. Amen? Amen? Openness, transparency, and be real. To build an intimate friendship, we must be willing to be honest, to be open and to be real. Don't, um, don't be superficial. You know, you know, sometimes if we are superficial, one time, two times, we can cover up. But in long time, it will be revealed that your friendship is not genuine, that our friendship is not genuine. We also do not hide our weakness and hurts. We should be, be able to share with our friend. But that doesn't mean that we tell everything to anybody that we feel we share, uh, we want to build a friendship because we must know, you know. You know, there's one church that I serve, there's one leader, she is not, I don't think she's, she's not a gossiper, but she likes to talk, you know, anybody is, she's very good friend with anybody and everybody. So sometimes, if you tell her anything which is secret, it tends to leak out. <laughs> so when there's something very serious that was told to her, it really caused a lot of problem. So we have to be careful. We have to be transparent, we have to be open. We need to share, but we must know Somebody cannot keep secret. Somebody, but not, not everybody is like that. Most of the time, the leaders are the one, you know, they're able to keep secret for you. But she's the exceptional one, you know. But that brings some trouble to the church. You know, but the church, but people don't blame her. They blame other people that happen, that, that speak this, speak that. So she's a very nice lady. She's a very nice lady. So we have to be careful when, when we speak, but we do not hide. You know, on the other way, the other way around, yeah, lah, don't, this person don't know whether can keep secret or not. Don't tell anything. Don't say anything. I stay where I also cannot say. You know, I work where I also cannot say. Too secretive already. That nobody can penetrate into your life. That's the other extreme. 
So are we to be like Jesus, Lazarus, Mary and Martha? To have such good relationship that their home is open. You know, for me when I was serving in the Chinese church, some of them have shop. I can just walk in and out because they open the hairdresser shop. Anytime you can go in. And some, their house, she stay in a kampong, uh, chodoi. Hey, her house still open, you know. When she's around, when she's still open, you can just walk in and out of her house. She, and of course, she has a gift of hospitality. But for us, you know, nowadays we stay uh, in this present situation, sometimes it's not advisable. It's not permissible for us to do that. So, um, be open, be real. And also, I would like to say this. How can lives be touched when we build the relationship? <clears throat> a relationship built is able to create an opportunity for a friendship to be established. A relationship built is able to create opportunity for a friendship to be established. I remember, you know, I have um, my, my son when he was studying in a, a Tadika, kindergarten in Nilai. And uh, our church actually was looking for somebody to clean up, <coughs> to clean up the church. Because our church is very small, uh, our members, many of them are you know, working, a lot of them are foreigners. Of course, the, the Tamil congregation, we have a Tamil congregation. The Tamil congregations are, are more locals with some <coughs> from India. But uh, we are not able to you know, uh, ask them to come and clean. So we actually employ. And this, my, my son's uh, kindergarten, the principal actually introduced me to one lady who is the parent of a girl studying in the same school and same class with my son, Brian. So she actually took up the job to come and clean the church for us. Just for 300 ringgit per month, one week twice to clean the church. And then, you know, I was just wondering, is she really in need that she wants the job, you know? And then, really, and then I found out that, <clears throat> you know, she's, her husband is a manager in a company in a factory. Can you imagine a manager wife want to come and do household chores for 300 ringgit a month? That was quite a number of years ago. But, you know, I, I don't think she needs that money. Really, I found out that actually she's not really in need of money. But she just needs to build some relationship. She just needs to get out of the house. She wants to come to the house to build some relationship. That's why she took up the job. A relationship built enables both parties to know that we can depend on one another in time of need. He or she will be there for you. If your relationship is built, you can know that this person is there for you. That person is there for you. I know of some one person She was having depression. She actually has schizophrenia. She's on medication. And many people don't understand. Doctors, you all might know. She, they don't understand that she needs to take medication. And the doctor said she needs to take medication for the whole life. Unless God actually intervene and heal her. Otherwise, for us, Christians, we shouldn't advise her to stop. Sometimes some kind and concerned Christians actually ask her to stop the medication. And when she stops, she go haywire. So many times, you know, she will relapse because and then there's one time when she work, you know, she thought she's normal. She actually can be normal until she work up go to work upside down until she do uh, overtime until at night, until, I don't know, 7, 8 o'clock, then she relapse again. 
they cannot overwork. They need to you know, work and enjoy and relax because they cannot take it anymore. And her family, her, 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 her family, especially her mother, really do not understand her. And she's, she, you know, some people with depression, I think the doctor will agree with me that they don't have that, um, you know, that, that push to do things. On. They cannot encourage themselves. They cannot push themselves to do anything. They always need people to push them. They cannot. And she, when she relapsed the last time, she actually cannot work at all. And she always, you know, stay at home, sleep, eat, go out, find friends. Actually, she found somebody that she knows that care for her. That somehow when she was in, you know, great depression and unhappy, she would go to the person to share. You know, I was really very happy. There's one doctor that actually, you know, worked with a psychiatric patient. And she always tell me, when she last time, she always go to UH. And I always, I, I, most of the time, I accompany her. She really liked the doctor. That doctor is a Christian doctor and was still doing his master at the time. And how he was really be able to, you know, talk to her and, and, and counsel her with love. She feels so much at home, you know, going from Banting, travelling to UH, just to see the doctor. But when the doctor, I think he finished his study, I don't know where he go, he was maybe work outside, working in the private sector. She actually feel very lost. And she transferred back to Clang, and Clang, <laughs> my goodness, Clang Hospital, she, 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 yeah, she got into her medication, but she cannot connect with anybody there. So, build the relationship so that you know somebody will be there for you. Somebody. Do you have somebody there? You know, depression cases, if we are not careful, they are suicidal. They are actually suicidal. So somebody care. Somebody is there for him or for her. That they know when they come to an end of the road, they know that this person will be able to give them time, show the care that they need. Their lives can be touched. I think many of you Go join the cell group and your study. Just walk across the room. Sometimes in the church, we just need to walk across the sanctuary. And sometimes as you read in the chapter, one of the chapter, the pastor, it's not that the pastor, you know, pastor only can do that. All of us can do that. And this person just walk across the field to help the coach, and from there, build the relationship. When that coach, when he is in trouble, when he has problem, he remember that he can come to this person who walk across the field to him. So, brothers and sisters, relationship is very important. Building relationship, we cannot live alone in this world. We always need one another. We all dedicate. We must dedicate all our relationship to God. But remember, love is always the starting point. It's always because of love. We love the lost. We love the people that is around us. That's why we extend our hands our friendship and just walk across the room or walk across the field or walk across your factory 
to build that relationship. Amen? Let us stand on our feet as we close here. Let us just sing some song with the worship team come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Worship you. Let us just sing some worship song. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, even today, as we come before God, relationship not only to others, But first of all, we need to build relationship with God. And when we have that vertical relationship with God, and this relationship is secured vertically, then we can have that horizontal relationship. That helps us so much. It could be to our spouse. It could be to our parents or our in-laws. It could be to our children. You know, some adopted children even though they are adopted but because of the love the care that the family that adopt them shower upon them they never felt that they are adopted because of that relationship that they have if there's any broken relationship it will affect our vertical relationship to God, with God. Let us come to God and ask God, God, I need that vertical relationship with you. And it is you that enabled me to have that horizontal relationship with everybody.
like to just invite you if for you for your life if there's any broken relationship either it's with God or with someone in your life or you are always closing up yourself that you are not able to extend the hand of friendship to anybody for the matter maybe because of certain situation that happened but God want to say He can heal you He can heal all your hurts He can mend every broken relationship Hallelujah And if you are the one that every eyes close every head bow if you are the one we just want to pray for you you just lift up your hand wherever you are standing I want to pray for you every eyes close every head bow if you are the one you just lift up your hand we'd like to pray for you yes I see the hand everybody eyes closed and head bow if you are the one just want to pray for you yes God is here God see and God knows what you are going through hallelujah Lord Jesus just want to surrender Lord those who are lifted up their hands to you Lord pray God even for those Lord who experience God Lord some broken relationship Lord either with you or with somebody Lord Father we just pray you will mend it in Jesus name in Jesus name Lord you are Lord our healer you heal every hurt oh Lord God you mend Lord every broken heart in Jesus name hallelujah oh yes Lord thank you God Lord hallelujah mend every broken relationship in Jesus name and Father I pray Father oh God Lord even as we oh God continue oh Lord to build our relationship with you Lord Father we pray that God that you continue to use us Father oh God Lord God to build Lord the relationship with the people that is around us, Lord. Lord, whether it's our own family, God. Lord, whether it's the people around us, Father. Lord, we pray that we want to just walk across the room. Lord, we just want to, Lord, God, go out, Lord. We just want to, Lord, be show our love and care, Lord, for people that is around us, Lord Jesus. Father, Lord, we do not want to stay alone, Lord. We do not live for ourselves, Lord. But we live for you, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. We live for you. I live for you. Lord, my family live for you, Lord. God, my children live for you, Lord. God, my parents live for you. My whole family, Lord, it's for you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, where in our family, in our place of work, that your name will always be glorified. Your name will be magnified. Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God bless everybody here Bless everyone that is here, Lord Father, we pray Your men, Lord, even our church relationship, Lord Father, we pray The healing will take place Lord, for hearts, Lord, that is wounded, Lord For heart that is hurting, oh God Lord, will be healed in Jesus' name In Jesus' name, Father Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord, to receive that healing, God. We receive, oh God, from you, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray. Father, oh God, healing will take place because, Lord God, God, that you are a God that a healer us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Use us, we pray. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, Lord. God bless everybody here. God bless everyone here. Lord bless us with the prayer we are here. To the Lord of the earth, let us sing power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas are roar and the sound of it on your name. I sing for joy and the world. 
connect at the back Go and enjoy and connect Build relationship Remember? Amen? Praise God Go with the presence of God Hallelujah God bless you